Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Safe Skiff Gaming, back with another League of Legends video, getting ready for the brand new season welcome coming up uh, later on. Well, pretty much within a week actually. As of me recording this, I'm still recording this in 2022. Obviously you're seeing these videos in 2023 at the beginning of the new year, and I hope your new year is already going well indeed. So, last game you saw me playing what is possibly going to be my main champion, Mordekaiser. I have been playing him during the back end of last season in the jungle and obviously he is primarily a top laner and he is still extremely strong as seen in that uh, video even against a cheese warwick in the uh, top lane this one um i'm actually playing ergot so as of this um moment um i've only played 10 games of ergot and i'm already starting to get a bit of a good grasp of how Urgot works, how his power spikes are, but obviously bear in mind that I am still a new player to Urgot as a champion. So um, Urgot wouldn't be normally a champion that I would have played this time uh, into going into the new season um, at any stage, even when I prioritise top lanes my main lane um, after placement games. So Urgot is obviously something that I've been uh, you know, learning. And I do feel I'm already getting a good grasp of it. So we're up against a Fiora, which is arguably the best champion um, right now in top lane, apart from possibly, arguably, Dr. Mundo, who I am banning, by the way. Uh, so he is my primary ban target at the moment. Um, as you can see, I do get a good E on her. At level 1, really, you're not really going to be doing that much. Um, but the fact that I managed to get a good a decent E onto her. I managed to get um, my PTA um, popped onto the Fiora. It's uh, pretty decent for me, bearing in mind that we are literally in level 1. So, Urgot has a decent level 2 as well, um, and also a decent level 3. But from levels 4 up until about 6, Urgot is known to be pretty weak. Um, so, his lane phase isn't the best, um, but his biggest power spike, arguably, is possibly when he gets to level 9. Now, why is it level 9 out of all levels? You know, it's not level 6 when you get your ultimate. Yes, he is very much stronger indeed because he then gains an extra. But then why is it not level 11 when he gets, um, you know, level 2 on his ult or level 16? The reason why? Because his W is now at max rank. As you see, there's now a big fight going on in the bot lane river. I know that at this stage, I am not really going to be gaining that much strength. Plus, also, I am a little bit pushed in, so I think to myself at this very moment, I'm just going to just try and push in the lane as much as possible, guarantee the CS, and make sure that I am doing basically my job is getting ahead as far as possible. So I see that Fiora is trying to get back up to uh, top lane. Fiora engages. I kind of missed on my E. Um, if I had actually gone the other way, that might have been a lot better. But now I'm in a little, little bit of trouble here. So I flash to try and get away from the Fiora. Uh, the Jin Zhao out of all um, was actually just coming up to top lane as well after that um, that little process of that massive fight. I was pushed in. I did warn my uh, teammates to back off. I didn't want that fight to happen. Unfortunately, the Yone does get first blood on the on their enemy mid laner, which is our Akali. Um, so a little bit of unfortunate start, but we press on the best we can. We can only do what we can. We are not really that strong as of this very moment just yet, but we know that our time will come later on. Now, Fiora does scale extremely well herself. Um, she is possibly the best duelist in the game. When the season started, she was just to be the best top lane, uh, top laner overall you know no matter what champion you were picking she was just outright the best uh, champion to play in top lane and uh, that was because the um the top lane mythic the tank mythics became insanely strong as well now you're going to see the um fiora is going to engage on our nunu and thankfully i just about managed to actually kill the fiora now Normally, I would not take Ignite on Urgot because I know I scale quite well. But there are two different reasons why I'm taking um, 
ignite on Urgot. As you can see, the um, I do not know why the uh, Jinja was thinking about going in. I guess maybe he thought that um, the Nuno and Willem was uh, basing in a bush, which I believe he did see. Um, but in trying to get to the Nunu, he has to go through an Urgot. Which, early game, he's not necessarily that strong. But the reason why you kind of take TTA is because you still do a great amount of damage even early. If the enemy disrespects your damage. Because, obviously, Jinjiao and even Fiora, even Yone, say, for example. They are still pretty squishy as champions, despite them all having life still in their kits. You know, they still have very good, uh, you know, abilities that they can all use. But... Urgot actually has better burst damage in the early game. The only thing that falls down for Urgot and why he's not quite so strong is that he's not necessarily tanky and his W isn't a toggle yet. So why, on the basis of the question, basically, to why Urgot has, is, it becomes possibly, arguably, his strongest at level 9, the W is no longer a, like, a typical ability. It then becomes a toggle. Which basically means that you can turn the W on and off when you please. And that is basically why the level 9 part, uh, the level 9 power spike is arguably his strongest power spike. Because you're not even spending mana where obviously from level um, effectively it's 2 because you're never going to go W as your um, opening ability. It would be a bit silly to do so. Some go Q because it does um, slow down the uh, enemy laner. Sometimes you go E because it does give you a shield and it does give you a way to engage if the enemy uh, champion decides to come close to you in a bit of a silly way. So, again, Fiora has come away from uh, top lane. Now, my thinking is it's either that they're looking for me to uh, overextend or they're looking to gank mid lane. Which is arguably possibly something that they could do. They could even just take a base at this moment. Uh, because Herald's not even up yet. So I believe at this moment, as you can see, Fiora's now popped back up. So I I believe that Fiora has possibly seen the Nunu somewhere. I believe that Nunu wasn't on this side of the map. So therefore, they put a very deep ward in our jungle. Now that could largely be quite strong. Because as soon as the, the Fiora knows where the Nunu is, which obviously she will now see that the um, that the Yone um, is being ganked by the Nunu directly through mid lane rather than through um, the river. She can now do what she wants by, primarily, and as you can see, that's exactly what is going on. Every single chance that I try and auto a minion, she's immediately engaging on me, because there is no legit threat. And arguably, Fiora has a better power spike right at this moment in time. Because, yes, she's got her ult and I've got my ult. But she's got better ways to engage. And also, she can deal more damage to me um, in, a t in a 1v1 fight. So I'm going to just try and uh, do and do some damage. And I actually do disrespect the fact that Fiora actually has Ignite. So, a bit of a silly death from me. Um, I don't have TP myself. So, I can't just TP up the top lane. Which I would normally be able to do. So... My thinking going into this game was to rush play, play to still caps, which I have done. Um, and then after that, rush a Ravenous Hydra. So, a lot of AD champions, so like Urgot is uh, one of them, um, Fiora is another. And um, you even see some uh, AD carries, like this Zeri right now. She's actually rushing a Ravenous Hydra herself. Other AD champions, Wukong is rushing it as well. You know, a lot of AD champions are rushing Ravenous Hydra because it gives you so much value for a non-mythic item. So, obviously, because um, it gives you so much value um, for what it's worth, it is worth rushing. Now, not all Urgot uh, players do use um, Ravenous Hydra. They prefer um, t uh, Titanic Hydra still over Ravenous Hydra. And it is more so the Urgot uh, mains or one tricks even that prefer it. So, as you can see as well, there is a now another gank. I am going to flash and just get away. Um, I'm trying to try and do a little bit of damage. If I went for an all-in on them two right now, um, I would not be surviving at all. But the only way that I would legit be able to do anything right at this stage is if they were to make a mistake. 
And right now, the Fiora is playing solidly. He's playing better than me, arguably. Um, and with it being a 2v1, um, I'm not going to be able to do quite as much because I can only aim for one target. So I'm a level um, 8 at the moment, so I'm almost near my level 9 power spike. So the level 9 power spike on Urgot is quite like, huge because of the damage output. It becomes um, a lot a lot larger because it is a toggle. But not just that, it is also because of the fact that um, my passive um, with the, uh, the legs is much higher. Now as you can see, I'm almost... Um, I am almost level 9 but I know that I'm not escaping this time so I had to fight that and luckily the Jin Zhao just uh, just goes in for the kill too early unfortunately I do die to Fiora but at least I managed to kill one of the two in the game so you know you gotta take your positives I did overextend I did I did overcommit for the tower plates as well I've gotten rid of three tower plates by the way um, but I do, um, in the end, get killed. But the good thing is that because I had Ignite, I was able to basically burst down the Zinjao so quickly, and quickly enough, despite not being level 9 yet, that I was able to do enough. So, as you can see with the other lanes, Nunu and Willem is going for the AP build, which a lot of Nunu players are going towards for at the moment. Um, no idea why, personally. I did play Nunu and Willem for a little bit when I went back to the jungle um, towards the end of last season. Um, and I always went tank me. So, so exactly why do you know him well? So going um, the AP route, I honestly do not know. Maybe it's because they feel that they can carry better. But arguably, I've always believed that the, um, that they can actually do more carrying by going tank Nunu. It does just as much damage, and they're able to survive longer. They are. So the Fiora was actually trying to do a blue buff, by the way. And my thinking there, so I take the um, blue buff, which. It's not something I necessarily would want to be taken away from a new new early. Because I don't have a great use for blue buff now. Because my W is on a toggle. But it is basically either I take it or the Fjord. And I'd rather have it not necessarily for the buff, but more for the experience. So yes, I'm taking it away from the new new. But it is more of I'm taking it away from the Fjord that was going to grab it if I didn't go and take it myself. So other lanes, um, so there is a we have got a um, support Morgana, which I do rate quite a lot, particularly in lower lower helos. Um, Morgana is quite strong because um, they don't actively do that great against uh, champions that create a lot of CC. Which Morgana does, but she's also gone dark carbon, which is the more aggressive version. So I'm going to go for another engage. I am on the Fiora. I, the difficulty for me is that I can't necessarily. Um, see um, the Fiora ulting because I've obviously I'm also looking at my um, my passive as well. I'm actually looking more for my passive, not Fiora's ult. So I didn't realise that the Fiora is actually ulting, which is kind of the difficulty in this matchup. The Fiora is obviously looking for her part of the ult, um, which is obviously easier for her to see. But obviously that will come with experience as well. So a little bit of a, another silly solo death that I shouldn't really be doing. Um, I know I am going to get strong at a certain phase. I have passed level 9, which is arguably the biggest power spike. But at the same time, I don't have ult. Um, and I don't believe I had ignite in that fight either. So the Nunu is just, um, just trying to save some of my wave a little bit. Trying to take a little bit Shut of uh, the minion wave. Not too much. And uh, because there's nothing really more to do in top lane, Fiora has gone down to mid lane and uh, trying to kill the Akali again. Um, the Akali um, is only one and two so far. So uh, Akali is not exactly that strong right now. Um, but Akali can obviously do um, some good things later on, possibly. Um, it's like against the Legion, who's obviously an AD carry. Akali is going to be built to be able to kill them uh, Tyrefog. Um, unfortunately, the Fiora does get a double kill while I'm not down there. I know that if I went down there, I would just basically um, be able to... Well, I'll be effectively feeding them even more. So my thinking is at this very point, although maybe the enemy team might like it, is that I am just trying to get um, the, the top lane turret. Again, I know now at this point that 
if I do, as you can see, I do miss my ult as well. Um, if I ch um, just try to escape and do nothing, then uh, Fiora's going to get me anyway. Like, you know, so a bit of an overextension, but I at least do get the towers. Um, you could argue that maybe is a little bit more worth it, but also at the same time, Fiora is getting further ahead, which is not good for me. Really, she gets a double kill in mid lane, and then she gets another solo kill. Um, and I believe at this moment, Fiora is now extended her lead so much that now she has full control over the map. So, you know, wherever Fiora goes, I do not really necessarily want to go. I want to try and catch back up. So as you can see, I'm just going straight back up to top lane, trying to catch the wave that is up in top lane. And if there is another lane that I can try and get um, minions from, try and get some more gold, try and get some more XP... That is what I'm aiming to do right now. I'm not really going to be doing anything when I'm behind a Fiora already. You know, if I try and start up a team fight with the Fiora being there as well, you know, and also the and the Yone's not weak either. He's actually fairly strong right now. It's Yone as well. But if I was to go down to um, down towards the Dragon right now, I'm not ultimately going to be making. You know, I feel. You know, in all honesty, a big impact. You know, I'd rather continue to farm um, to try and catch back up. And not just that, I also want to get my stats for my Ravenous Hydra. So, pre season, they have reworked Ravenous Hydra and they did um, do something God like, me. you know, to make it astonishingly powerful. Like, literally, every single AD champion there and that was all rushing it. You know, including some AD carry champions like Neela. Zeri has rushed it in this game in particular. So, you know, it was a bit of a... You know, a bit of an issue with regards to that. It was, so... But we do find the, uh, the Maokai roaming around our jungle, so they do escape. They're most probably going to be getting this next dragon because... Nunu is still at the base at the moment. So the next best thing to do is just try and pressure um, a lane, whether it might be top lane or mid lane. So we pressure top lane because that's where the jungler is. Instead of taking the dragon right now, um, they decide to try, try and pressure mid lane for some reason. No idea why specifically, but yeah. But for you, it's not there, which is good. And, uh, yeah, so basically I ult um, the Jin Yao there, I believe, or the Maokai, one of the two. Yes, I die in the end there, but you can see right there that because of my ult, so there's two phases there as well. Effectively, there are three different parts to um, Ergot's ult. So the first one is basically um, the targeting. So it is a skill shot, so it's not a guaranteed hit, so don't just... Um, willingly just aim it aimlessly um, towards anywhere it won't directly go into somebody you have to actually use it sparingly um, when somebody's about to die so I believe it's 25% health that is the execute range so similar to like say Pike um, it's similar to that um, so you got that so you can use it before they get to 25% but if you're using it um, before they get to 25% health you then have to press it again when they get to underneath 25% health. Um, before, um, before the four, four seconds are lapsed. As you can see, I do actually miss my ult. But Maokai just comes directly into me. So I think, okay, let's just kill the Maokai. I can actually um, do some reasonable amount of tanking, tanking. Because I've got Aegis of the Legion now. But then it just goes into a full scale fight, which I did not realise at the time. Um, the Yone just comes in. At this very moment in time, I do actually wish I actually had ult for this moment. Because I think if I had ult for that specific moment, I possibly could have got a triple kill. But that is what I mean by using your um, Ergot's ult at the right moment. Because if you miss the target, that's a big ult you've lost. You know, it's similar to using a Vexel as an example. If you use a Vexel and it completely misses, that's it. Shut down. You know, that's one of the main parts of Vex's kit. It's uh, similar to Urgot. He's like, yes, you can still do a great and a lot of damage. 
but obviously at the same time it's one of those one of those type of faults that you know if you use it correctly and you can actually take out somebody you can get more than one kill in an instant because once the ult has been completed then you actually do fear as well um enemies around you that includes minions as well of course which obviously doesn't matter hugely but it does um end up um fearing um enemy champions around you as well which is quite quite a big big thing because if you can force put them into a, a bit of a bad position you can do a lot all of a sudden like just like that you can so we're continuing the farm um i will say the uh, mythic item that we're going to be going is uh, jack show there is a couple of mythics that you can go on i got so the main one i tend to go well i've gone jack show on every single match um, on Urgot, but you can also go. Um, I've forgotten what the uh, mythic is called now. It's the um, Lethality Eclipse, that's it. So uh, you can also go Eclipse on Urgot. Um, arguably, it's a lot riskier, but there's a lot more damage out. There is. I do try and aim for the. Um, for the. Um, Lucian there. Unfortunately, I do miss my target, but we still get an assist on the Yone. For some reason, he decided to ult into a Nunu. Um, which, to be honest, that shouldn't be really his priority target, so the um, Nunu is going uh, AP. You know, Exhibit A, how did they die so quickly? Well, they've, they've gone Night Harvester. The only other um, item they've got, well, the only other item they've got, really, that is, you know, considered okay for... Um, Thanks is a balmy cinder, which will be, of course, for some Um which was a mythic last season, now no longer a mythic. But yeah, so going night harvester as their mythic item does leave them a bit squishy right now. So I believe balmy cinder is 300 health, yeah. So 300 health, which isn't that much, but still, it doesn't give them any armor, it doesn't give them any magic. Units. So I do actually continuously ping the Morgana back to say to her, no, we do not want to engage that. Because uh, Zeri is farming still. Um, and I am wanting to continue to farm as well. Fortunately, Fiora is going to try and find the um, the Akali and the Zeri. They're going to go in a 2v2 with it in jail as well. But the Morgana's not too far away, I don't believe. But as you can see, the uh, Fiora does manage to kill the Akali. Um... I do realise soon after, I don't think it's um, that much later than this, I realise that the Akali has gone a very silly mythic, and you'll probably have already noticed it. She decided to go Leandris for some reason, which is, you know, Akali does not need mana. She doesn't even use mana as a resource. She uses energy. Which, I do ping her, which I think she realises soon afterwards, she shouldn't be going that item, whether... Somebody else told her that in chat. I do not know because I don't actually have chat open um, when I'm playing League. I don't find it very useful. You know, I'd rather use ping to tell somebody do not go there or, you know, tell them, you know, we do not want to go in that direction. So right now the dragon is up, but I do not believe that the uh, red team is actually looking for that. I think they're actually looking for Baron, which then, for us, does actually open up. We have got um, some vision in um, the Boktar section of the river, so they will take possibly the Baron, but then that will mean that this will give us a free dragon. As you can see, confirmed, they did take the Baron there, so that does give us effectively a free dragon. Now, why did they actually take Baron, possibly? Well, you look at the map right now. Um, they are actually um, pressing onto mid lane quite well so far, and they've been doing that all game. So, they are probably looking to end it soon, knowing that they are very far ahead. Like, you've got a 10 and 3 for Aura. You've got a 3 and 4 Jin Jao, but it's started doing very well recently. And an 8 and 4 Master Jin with a 5 and 5 Luke has started doing very well recently. The mistake, though, is that the Maokai got caught by me. Fiora is now getting caught. The Yone started going all in for some reason in the middle of the tower. I actually mistimed my flash into the flash earlier. 
but we managed to get shut down um, from two very important champions and take out their support as well, which basically allowed us to get that very good in-game. So at this point now, we have now got freedom over the map um, all of a sudden. The Lucian, for some reason, is starting to just try and attack us. Um, unfortunately, my ult is down at the moment because I believe I did miss it again. But it's not a big deal because I can now just really take this turret away. Um, we are having the objective bounce falling off. So we'd like to try and get this before it goes and we manage to do it. So from this point on, is basically now... This is possibly the start of the comeback, but we need to keep up that momentum going. But also at the same time, we need to keep that lead, keep it going, keep it going ahead. As of this very moment, we can't just back off. We can't continuously team fight because the enemy team are very good in solos as well. Um, you know, and also you got some, and also some of the champions are really good in team fights as well. So we do need to be more coordinated in how we're um, fighting. So the Ginger has just taken the blue buff, I believe. I do go in for an all-in. There's not too many more people um, around us, necessarily. Um, I do... But obviously, I, I actually do not realise that um, there was three. I think, I believe that it was just the Ginger and the Yone. I do not see the Maokai, which the Maokai takes a lot of my damage um, at the end of all of that. So I do lose my shutdown. Um, who did I lose that to? I believe it might have been uh, the Yone. Shut down. But in all of that, the Jin Jiao also gets shut down by, by our Nunu, um, quite ironically. Thankfully, at this point in the game now, though, the Akali has actually now switched to the correct Mythic. So she's gone Probo Belt. Um, so she could go that or she could go Night Harvester. Arguably, Probo Belt is better because it does give her an extra dash. Um, I'll go for a long range ult, hoping that maybe it can land on the Fiora. Doesn't quite hit, though, unfortunately. But we do manage to take out everybody apart from the Yone. The Yone is the only one that is actually alive right now. But obviously there's nothing really too much more to take. So we're better off just going up towards top uh, mid lane. And just trying to get that tower there. Now with Yone being where he is right now. He probably should be very careful. He be backing up. But some of the rest of the team are starting to come back up. The Jinjao's already back. But as you can see, again, we're starting to make that slight little bit of a comeback right now. We are, but, you know, it is still anybody's game, you know. Like, obviously, we didn't have the greatest of playing phases. Um, but, you know, we're hanging in there, which is good. So, third item, arguably, possibly the best non-mythic item for Urgot. Arguably, you want to be going this every game. I'd see a lot of Urgot mains even rushing uh, this item, the Black Cleaver. So, Black Cleaver's been in the game for a long, long time. Um, back in old League of Legends, before even Mythics came out, back when I was a brand new player to the game, um, Black Cleaver was actually the first item that you would build on Urgot. Like, this is um, back before you even finished up playing properly. So, I end up getting um, what I believe is a really big ult. Unfortunately, I do die just before my ult fully um, goes through. So there is that unfortunate timing that you can get killed while you're ulting somebody in. Um, if you get killed before the ult fully goes through, the champion that you attempted to ult does survive it, unfortunately, which happened right there, as you can see. But if that did hit, you, you will probably have noticed destroyed. that that would definitely have been possibly like and there's one of those Routine moments that maybe an ergot player can get a pentacle the because they're so spread out they are because they've been feared into different places but at the same time as well they just you have all the momentum going for you which is why ergot is so dangerous you know especially in these um, type of uh, predicaments 
So, but you can see how dangerous we are as an Urgot. Unfortunately, we didn't kill the Jinjao at the end, but we were really close, you know. But we allow, but we got the damage in for everybody else to be able to take care of him very easily. You know, it was either a matter of he is no longer part of the fight, or yes, he may go in, but he will die in post. That's exactly what happened there. Yeah. So we take Raptors, get rid of that. Um, we want to try and continue on pushing elsewhere. So we pushed in mid lane to uh, the base in the mid lane. Um, now there's two different things that we can do. We can either go for Baron because all three lanes are pushed right now. Or we can possibly try and push in uh, bot, uh, bot lane right now. Um, the wave comes back to uh, mid lane. But, you know, so we'll take that real quick. And then set up a Baron. Which uh, our teammates have all started up already. So I see the uh, Lucian is coming up behind very closely. And the Morgana does unfortunately die because she is split pushing. Which uh, arguably maybe she's trying to um, catch the... Um, try and get the bot lane tower, tier 2 tower. But, you know, as a support, arguably she shouldn't be there on her own. You know, she is quite powerful, do not get me wrong, guys. So we are now level 16, as well as the Akali. You know, despite Akali not having really that great of a lane phase, um, you know, she's not she's not been too bad, been doing too badly overall. She's actually recovered it with quite well. She has overall so far. Uh, the Fiora now only level 15, which is uh, a bit weird to see that Fiora is constantly wanting to be with her team. You kind of normally see in a car a, uh, a Fiora actually split pushing. Um, not actually staying with a team all the time. You know, despite the whole rest of the team being very good um, team fighters. You know, Jin Zhao, Yone, Illusion's even pretty good in team fights. You know, to a degree. He does kind of fall off. You know, compared to most of his shows. I try and actually E the, um, the Yone, but he doesn't quite hit. It's a bit unfortunate. The mount card goes for a little bit of an in-game. Doesn't quite hit. And then everything just goes ham. I get altered by the Fiora. But you can see the large amount of damage because I've positioned myself very well. I don't necessarily have to be at the very front of the fight to deal damage. And that's a good thing with Ergo. But it's something I also need to learn at times as well. Is uh, using W effectively and highly effectively at that. And because we got Baron, that helps out as well. That allows us to push even harder now at this point. So I believe this is around about coming to the end of the game at this point. I did also buy Bramble Vest because Yone, Jinjao and Fiora even helps out against a Maokai. You know, they are effectively a full AD team, team pop. Yeah, and I'll use my ult again to try and uh, sneakily grab the Jin Zhao, but it's not really needed in the end. And uh, going for another nasty play there again. But, you know, like I'm at this point in the game, maybe we're not going to be ending um, at this very uh, stage in the game. But we're very, very close to that. The Lucian gets a quadra kill. And, uh, yeah, so uh, I do... Um, get a little bit annoyed at the Akali actually wondering why she wasn't in the team team fight I believe um, She actually ended up uh, split pushing a little bit which got me a little bit annoyed You know with the trolling with the um, the Andrew's anguish which she doesn't use mana at any stage then um, obviously is now just um, split pushing there But Akali's now thinking about maybe trying to try and do a backdoor Yone notices that very, very quickly. And uh, I do not believe this goes off in the end very well. No, it does not. So the Kali actually does get shut down. Um, so, yeah, so we all got uh, basically picked out in the end. Maybe we shouldn't have pushed that hard, but we have, we're, we're near enough, pretty much opened the base um, of the enemy team quite full. No, it's only bot lane that really needs to be done, dealt with. Um, but we should also have priority um, over getting dragon. But as you can see, the uh, enemy team are already there. 
So I'm thinking about a little bit of an engage onto the Jinjiao if I can. If I can get a good ult onto the Jinjiao and actually do a lot of damage onto him, then that would be a very good thing. But you can see the Jinjiao is actually not acting very aggressive. So it allows us to be able to start coming in, trying to do a little bit of damage gradually. And allows us to be able to get in front. The, uh, the Lucian um, in a bit of a silly position, I will say. And uh, yeah, so from that point on, the Yane's not even there, by the way. Because he's trying to deal with uh, mid lane right now. And I suddenly realised, okay, we've killed everybody but Yone. Just go up and end the game. The, their base is pretty much open. It is at this point. So me and Morgana both um, start turning up to uh, mid lane. But they have already surrendered the game. So that was a game and I got. Not the cleanest, I will say. But, you know, we did actually managed to uh, get um, a little bit of a comeback from that game actually um, just through making some uh, good teams some good uh, decisions and all split pushing when I needed to as well try and get that solo experience try and get a lot of gold so that way I can catch back up as you can see through all of that we did pretty much actually get more CS than the Fiora um, yes she got more kills than me but then again, at the same time, I did get an extra assist to her um, over um, over a lot how many kills she got. Um, but in the end, I would probably say we got about equal gold. Maybe I got a little bit more than her. Um, but she was probably going for a black cleaver herself in, in the next day, which I believe if she got to that part, she probably would have been a big threat because that would have been going on to me. That would have been going on to the Nunu quite a bit as well, which would have been alarmingly high damage but also as well i do think that the zeri was uh popping off quite a bit as opposed to the lucian like the lucian was falling off a little bit which is obviously um why a lot of ad carry players probably don't play lucian so he's very good in early game because he does a lot of burst damage but in late game he doesn't do quite so much especially compared to a zeri so that is that i hope you enjoyed the game of ergot um so that is possible that is going to be another one of our main champions that we're going to be playing during the next season um so obviously i do have limited experience like i said at the start of the video so i do aim to try and get better ergot my ergot games will become better over time um i will say um i've played 10 games of ergot i've won nine out of the 10 and the one that i didn't win was effectively completely lost because every single other lane um in my point of view um, just point blankly fed and me and the opposing top laner basically went neutral because um, I'm obviously don't have a mass real big power spike until like level 9 and he was playing quite safe so he didn't need to do anything I couldn't really do that much and basically all the other four um, champions on my team basically fed out of their minds so obviously that was uh, unfortunate on that game um, but otherwise I've won every single game I've even played a couple of games against a couple of gold players one of them didn't go well but one of them did so i hope i'm um, obviously you do enjoy the ergot because i am playing the player a decent amount of ergot um maybe he might be um one of the main reasons why i climb for next season because uh, the goal obviously is going to be the same as uh as last season like i said in uh, an upcoming video um or the video that you've probably already seen my uh, end of year review going in um going through 2022 into 2023 that my goal for league next season is going to be try and get the silver once we get to that maybe even hit gold because i think that is possible but it's a matter of how many games i do play but if you do enjoy the video don't forget to click the like button it does help out a lot and also subscribe to the channel if you do want to see more videos such as this and also even see some more shorts on the channel as well which there has been uh, quite a few um at the closing end of the year um and even dvd content as well that's come from stream so if I am streaming maybe as well, maybe even come out and check out and see if I'm streaming. Maybe even follow me on Twitch as well, which all of them links will be down in the description below for you. But otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. I hope to see you guys next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody.